So I've just tightened up that inspection hatch. The sender unit's in by factory and I've already connected up the, um, the inlet so we can fill water from the outside. So what I'm going to do now is get my hose out, fill the, the tank completely um, and let it sit for a period of time. Once we're happy, there's no leaks in any of the joints or the tank or anything, there's no issues, we'll then carry on insulating. You can see we put just a little bit of insulation on top there. And then that's going to get sealed up with insulation tape. Uh, and we're going to go right round the entire thing. Obviously not the bottom because it's not under there as it is, but the floor is insulated. So hopefully that will help with keeping the, keeping the water nice and cool and condensation and things like that prior to going to the joiner, which we're kind of hoping it's going to be next week now that we get to the joiner. The, the, um, the lightweight plywood is in stock and it should be here in three or four days. So I'm trying to get as much of this work done as I can so we can get it over to the joiner. So this, we've connected on to the cold water storage tank here by a 22 connection and it's going into a shut off valve. That pipe is then going to run directly right round into the utility at the, the back that we've been working in, into the pump and the expansion vessel. We've put the hose in now, so that's us ready to fill the tank. This connection here is a, a marine connection, marine stainless steel. And what it would get used for would be the water fill, but it would be on the deck of the boat like that. So because you have this plug chain thing here, it's just something I need to be aware of that when we take this off and unscrew it, it holds on. And I like the idea of it being attached to the truck so I can't lose it. I don't like the idea of it being able to hit the truck. So we'll make a decision whether we cut that bit off or not. Um, but just now we'll be careful. So we're now gonna turn the water on, start filling the tank and start watching the tank. We want to fill it right up until it overflows out of here and then turn it off and leave it for a good period of time to make sure that all the seals, everything, including the tube up to here, are all completely watertight. Because as I say, hopefully it will insulate this next and then it'll be going to join our get boxed in so there can be no mistakes now. And as you can see, there's a, a little puddle of water appearing here. So this is why you want to do your tests prior to insulating and blocking in. So we'll just give it another little nip up and then we'll give it a go again. Because these are plastic fittings, you have to be aware you don't want to over tighten them. You just get them down to like a hand tight, then give them a half turn. You know, you, you don't want to over tighten. If it jumps a thread, there's every chance that the thing's never going to work again. You're never going to get a good seal on them. And it's even worse if you've got a metal thread to a plastic thread. you just got to be very careful and just nip up. So you, I am expecting a couple of leaks here and there on these type of things, because I'll just slightly nip them up until they are completely watertight. The other ones like the John Guest plumbing fittings that are push fit with O-rings, I'm not bothered about them. They should work straight out, straight out the box. But the likes of this, and this kind of thing. It's a nice gentle nip up so you don't damage anything. Let's try again.
Uh, that's tight, isn't it? That's going to go. If there's any more issues with that one, we're going to have to take that off and put some tape or check its washer, make sure it's not twisted or something. So, got that cloth, we'll give it a wipe and then we'll give it a go again. Okay, well that's the tank just about full now. Um, we'll come across and have a look. We've had to tighten up the inlet a couple of times again, so we'll keep an eye on that because obviously what we want to do is fill this whole system right up. See if that's overflowing now outside. It is, so we'll turn the hose off. So that's obviously so we're right to the very top. And then we'll turn this hose off and we'll now sit and watch inside. Right, so we're going to leave this now under test. This is all full here and this was full right up. So we can see there, see there's a, a very, very slight leak of water coming out of here again. So what we're going to have to do is, is leave the rest here. Everything looks fine on this connection. That's just an old mark there. So this is all okay to this valve. This does go all the way through to the pump, but I'm not going to turn that on yet because I want to chlorinate and flush this tank out anyway before I release through to the, the, the rest of the system because there'll be debris and things like that in this tank anyway, it's only new. But what we'll do is we'll leave this, give it another 5-10 minutes, make sure all these cut ones are okay and then unfortunately I'm going to have to take that one back off again. Uh, I'll try putting some tape around the, the plumber's tape around here tighten this back up again and then just check this washer inside here if, whether it needs a little bit of plumber's tape or whatever but we'll have a look at it again um, flush all this through and then we'll do it again
Okay, that looks like that's done the trick now. That's the, the plumber's tape, the PTFE on the, 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 the inlet there um, has, has stopped that little weep. So we'll leave the tank full now um, and we're just going to give it a, a couple of hours sitting like this. Uh, we're going to have a cup of tea and then we'll come back out. And if everything's working away fine, we're going to add some Instaclor Insta tablets to it, which is a chlorine tablet, making it a solution and we'll fill the tank, move the truck back and forth a few times, give it a good slosh out, give it a contact time of one hour, and then we're going to drain that back out again into a, a, a different tank, uh, and we add thiosulfate to that to take away the chlorine, and then we'll just put that down the drain, it just turns it back into water again. And that's a tank this size, um, classed as super chlorinated, and it'll be potable water thereafter that we, when we fill it back up again once it's all cleaned out um, it'll, it'll be good to go so happy with that that's a big step forward we've got a drain valve in the plumbing's right through as I say to the pump at the back get the tank cleaned out we can get it insulated and I'm happy for the joiner to to, to box this all in now so that's that's a big step forward I think doing this has now just made the decision whether we keep the chain or not. Because that is just a pain in the backside. No, this isn't going to work out for me. So I'm going to leave that off just now and then we're going to have a look inside because that's a little Phillips head here. So I'm going to have a look inside. In fact, I may just take it off here and then put it back down into the tank, but that could maybe cause some siphonage or some other kind of malarkey. I don't know. Anyway, that's made the decision. That's coming off. I'm not having that chain like that. We'll take it off and we'll hold it. We're not that silly. But we'll, well, we probably are. But anyway, we can't have it. We can't fit it back in again. It's for a, a horizontal. Um, placement. Yeah, placement for the floor, for dropping back in again and tighten it up, that's, that's not working. Anyway, live and learn. Make a decision later if we maybe come up to something that's we manage this or whatever. So I won't just I have to either pull it off vigorously and break it or cut it off inside. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take it off at this side, put the chain back inside. It's not going to lie in the water, and it is marine grade stainless steel anyway. So we'll drop it back inside just now. No, 
so that will just lie down the turn of the, the bend at the moment, but that will at least let us slightly smaller drill bit um, than the rubber tubing for the hot water drain down so I can push right through but I just had to measure the torsion free subframe because the hole that's coming up one side is for the um, diesel line and the electric and the one on the other side the torsion free subframe is the the one that I've just bored just now for the So you can see the two holes there. So a bit of a work in progress just now. We're doing, we're just continuing on with the, the plumbing system in here. So I'm running the hot and cold just now. I've got these cable tied together because this is obviously where the drawer unit's going to be in this big hole. So they'll lie under here and the drawer unit will sit on this part and go to the back, 100 meters off the back, 100 meters, 100 millimeters off the back and then be boxed up again. So this is basically the duct here that's going to have the water pipes and the electrical connections from the toilet and the, the lights and the fans and things from this side coming underneath. But more importantly, this area underneath here, this thickness here to the air conditioning unit, that is the, the breathing air that's going to come from that. There'll be one in here as well, as we said, but underneath here, coming to the back of the fridge is the other, it's the bigger vent for the, the, the both trumers. So I'm just finishing that off just now. I will have connected up the cold to the trumer unit. The cold then runs through to where the sink's going to be, the hot and cold there. You can see the white pipe joining it, the blue pipe. Um, that is the, the, the feed from the tank. aircon on this side this locker and that's pretty much its final position uh, it has to go in this position for a couple of reasons one underneath the floor you have these big lockers here the depth of them and there, there is an in and an out slot it comes at the bottom of this so i have been in touch with my local fabricator he's making up a, a, a galvanized a thin galvanized sheet um, base and in that like the template basically you would get for this exactly the same if I had to give them the template and where it has the holes that are cut out so you would cut out the bottom of your caravan sorry just for one second I want to show the noise maker so carry on I've been in touch with the local fabricator and he's making up a, a, a thin steel plate that will basically resemble the actual paper template and what I've got them to do is where the holes, the two holes are, that you'd cut right through the body of the caravan or whatever you're doing, obviously this truck in this instance, because it's so thick and it is a, a foam surround, a cell, I want to protect that, especially at the back from splashing or water crossings or whatever we're gonna do. So he's, as I say, he's made that plate up. I'll let you see it when it comes. And it has two squares. It's got two ducts basically that come down inside with a very fine mesh underneath. Now this mesh is going to be the same to allow the air to come in and out the same, but it won't let any beasties or anything like that. So it's going to stick down, but we had to measure it so it was in between the torsion free subframe and you've only got five mil. So it's going to be quite a quite a tricky installation this, but hopefully it'll work out. But as I said, this is where the, 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 um, the air con has to sit now. And that's because these ducts have to flip over the back and then go up the other side where we put the heating ducts up. 
This one will also go over the top and then come in this side because there's one just where the pipes are there. And again, that hole there we've already discussed, that's the hot coming through into the toilet. So there's no place else it's to go. A minute ago, we discussed inside about the, the drawer unit and the little um, area underneath. You can see that clearer here now with this fancy pointer. That's the thickness there where the drawer unit's going to be up to the top. So the floor level that's going to be, and the, the, the joiner's going to make a, a, a floor basically in here that's going to come all the way through to about there. And that makes me able to stick a hose or whatever we need on top of that floor, but it won't block this piece underneath here because that area there has to have a free flow of air under here right through underneath the drawer unit to get to the other side so that we can keep the air um, circulating because this part here as you can quite clearly see is where the air goes in and once this door is shut this has to draw air in from the other side so we've just made a big wooden duct really right through so hope that works So the last bit I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put more cable ties on these two pipes that are coming through here. The, this pipe here with a valve on it um, is going to connect to this rubber pipe here that's connected to the toilet. The, the toilet that we have is the one that doesn't have a storage tank so you don't fill it from here. It comes from the, the, um, the internal tank. So that will connect onto there. So that's that taken care of. And then these two that'll come down uh, underneath the, the, the vent area. They come up here and they'll go up the side of the window um, and they're, they're quite simply the last two for the, the shower uh, in the bathroom. Toilet.